Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to another edition of The Wild Show. Yes, sir. The Washingtons on the Washington Redskins. Oh, and you can see know. tonight, I'm excited because we got not only my man Scott Dickens down here on the left, but also in the center, my brother Darrell Washington. Guess who's up. back? Yes, <laughs> indeed. Oh, so, hallelujah. That's right, that's right. So, we're going to get into a lot tonight because, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people think that we don't do The Wild Show anymore. Uh, Robert Graham... Uh, you've been ashamed of yourself, you know. Really, I could have got into that hot pots, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be nice, <laughs> being nice, uh, Negro. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. anyway, anyway, that, that, that's that's what I want to give my white uh, uh, followers away. <laughs> Look, um, anyway, it's called a ninja. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> you know. So we are, we are, we are here tonight, um, and also behind the camera tonight is uh, my man uh, Charles Kane. He's um. Like I always say, one of the producers of the show. See, okay. um, but we always like to give out a shout to anybody that's um, that's uh, representing uh, breast cancer awareness and holding it down. But here on the Wild Show, we always represent and hold it down with that. I even got my pink socks on. I'll show you that later on. So, um, fellas, we lost yet again. But mm. with losing... Uh, we learn something else again, you know what I mean? Now, for me, you know, uh, I'm not going to get into it with you today, Scott, but I'm saying right now, um, I can't wait until RJ3 get back, okay? Because he, he coming back. There's no way in the world we're going to... Now, now, they may end up playing the whole season I let them play, you, you know, you know, you know, but but I saw some funny things on on, um, on Facebook today, you know, so a buddy of mine texted me some stupid bitches. They showed RG3 with his hair mm. and a ball head. They said, they, they said that's what they're going to look like by the time he get to play in the NFL again. <laughs> yeah, right. then, then, then one dude said, I put an RG3 stick on my car and now it won't stop. I said, <laughs> 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 I said you know what? I said, I said, they come up with the wildest stuff. You know what I mean? Oh so <laughs> so we, we, we have a great show today. Um, also, uh, Mika will give you some of her uh, football 101. And then Scott Dickens will give you his wild corner. And um, and you know you know and we we just got some fun today. We have, we have a lot of fun. Um, I know y'all got a lot to say. Um, and so we'll 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 be back after this minute. Um, uh, and we're gonna go see what Scott Dickens had to say in the Wild Corner. Peace. I'm Scott Dickens, and this is the Wild Corner. If I have, would be totally remiss if I not give credit with credit to do when it comes to certain position coaches. I have to tip my hat off to Perry Fuel and Bill Callahan. Now, I don't think a lot of people really noticed this, but we drafted Moses Morgan, Morgan Moses, I, I forget, I get his name inverted, last year. And he couldn't seem to find his head from his tail last year. And he got very little playing time on the field. And when he did, he didn't look, he looked kind of lost like a rookie. Now, Ask yourself this question. He come back the next year later, and not only did he improve by leaps and bounds, he improved so much to the degree that he not only became the starting right tackle, he's actually playing like a Pro Bowl right tackle within a year's time. Matter of fact, the week we lost to the Giants, the NFL rated him as the top rated right tackle that whole week. Now, my point is this. You don't just jump from loss to Pro Bowl in a year unless you got a position coach that's teaching you something. That's real erudite. You ever notice how we got injuries on the line? Pro Bowl left tackle, Trent Williams wasn't there. Now Sean LeVay, the starting left, the whole start, left side of the line still is not there. But we got the same level of pass protection that never dropped off. 
Now, I understand we can't run the ball because Spencer Long just ain't physical enough to beat his man, and you really can't teach that. If you, if you got that or you don't. But for the most part, you see consistency along the Redskins' offensive lines in relates of play, and it doesn't make a difference to, to pretty much to who they putting out there. That lets you know that their position coach is teaching some fundamentals that the last coaches wasn't. And I got to tip my hat off to Prairie Fuel, too, because here, Chris Culliver, D'Angelo Hall, a lot of them guys aren't in the secondary. We, we're starting six-round pick rookies and players that have very little experience, but the defensive backfield has not really fell off with the exception of a little bit of bad play that they had on it this week. But that's, we, we're in the week five now. We, I mean, week, week six now. So that's excellent coaching. And I just got to take my hats off of that because just because you got good, bad head coaching <laughs> and bad play calling from the head coach, same type of play calling that resembled Cincinnati Bengals, <laughs> doesn't mean that we ain't got a heck of a coach in Bill Callahan on the offensive line and Prairie Fuel at the defensive backs. And I'm Scott Dickens. And these are one of those things that make you go wild. All right, Scott Dickens always brings it with the wild corner, as y'all know already. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, indeed, man. So, 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 Daryl Scott, I think we'll um we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and start this segment off um with the defense because the defense, as you just mentioned, seems like they are uh, the only cats I've been trying to win for real. Yep. You know what I mean? Now, I, I now I dare say that, and 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 in respect of. The, the players on, on offense who are hustling all, every week, like Pierre Garçon and uh, and and, and uh, 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 Matt Jones, who can't play anymore with his bad toe, and what Brian Grant and, and, and Rashad Ross and uh, and the rest of the game. But mm -hmm. but nevertheless, you you guys know who we talking about. The defense been setting it off, mm -hmm. you know. So um um, um you, you know you know since you brought that up and since that was your idea. What, I mean, I mean, I mean, tell me what you think um, um, has been outstanding so far with our defense. Well, I'm going to tell you what went wrong Sunday. Mm -hmm. The second half came in and we just failed to make plays in the secondary. Mm -hmm. Like I saw a lot of good coverage, but then the play was not made on hitting the ball. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, they weren't tackling. Right. You don't tackle you done. Right. And I don't look at that as bad coaching on Prairie Fuel as a defensive back coach. Okay. I look at it as just we didn't execute. Right. And I know they're going to button up tackling this week. Mm -hmm. That was the worst tackling we did the whole year. Right. 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 Darren, mm -hmm. I, I, like I was saying, you, 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 that was really your, your uh, idea about, about this defense, man. And I thought it was a good idea. But what, what, how do you feel about it, your words? Well, um, if it wasn't for the defense, man, we would have, we, we would have had a goose egg, yeah. you know, because um, they definitely set up two of the uh, scoring opportunities right. that should have been touchdowns, That's right. which we only got field goals for. But, um, I mean, they, they seem to be the only unit that's playing with a sense of urgency, man. I mean, um, I... Uh, I love what, you know, what, what Rashard Breeland's been doing, you know, and the way he's, he's been consistent, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah. Even with that makeshift uh, defensive backfield that they got back there, man. And you I know? mean, I'm telling you right now, that's a heck of a makeshift defensive backfield because a lot of people gave us no credit at all. None. Right? No respect at all mm -hmm. when we want to be playing. Um, uh, last week with... Um, uh, the game on the line with, with the Jets, I said last week was Sunday, you know, you know, you know, they told us already, oh man, the Jets got the number one defense, and y'all ain't gonna be able to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, it ain't like no number one defense to me. And if that's the number one defense, if we'd have had all eleven offensive starters, I think it would have been a whole different ball game, that's for sure. You know, you boy lovers keep talking about y'all missing Romo and y'all missing Dez Bryant. Well, I'm gonna tell you something right now, we missing about Eight or nine cats that are Pro Bowlers. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know, you talking about crying, Graham? Ain't nobody crying. I'm, 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 I'm stating facts here, brother. You know, y'all talking about two people. Okay. So, 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 
you uh, uh, you figure when you get them two people back, y'all gonna win. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna win no more <clears> for, <throat> for a while for mm-hmm. sure because they, they had to get they had to be back in football shape and they come back. Yeah, you know. So yeah. you ain't gonna win Sunday. That's for sure. Okay, <laughs> you, can, you can you best believe. They got the Pats. No, they got the New York Giants. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah, that's right. They gonna right. punch them in the mouth. That's right. In the face. Mm-hmm. Which matter of mm-hmm. fact, y'all ain't won the game this month. Yeah, I know. it's going on. Fu- this gonna be the fifth week you gonna get to put in. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so now, so now, my my thing is, we're gonna to go to the Mika real quick with uh, uh, football one on one. We're gonna come back and we'll finish this defense because I'm gonna tell you right now, I really think we're really missing Junior Galat right now. Mm-hmm. But we'll talk about that when we get back. Wow, show. One oh one. So this week I'm gonna be real short and sweet. We lost. And in 101, I want to talk about challenges. Um, I know that since preseason, even in training camp, we've been hit with some serious challenges. Um, We lost our starting QB. We lost some key players. Um, Players keep getting hurt in and out of the games and are out for a certain amount of time and everything and what I would like to say about that is challenges are not thrown your way to make you lose challenges are thrown your way to see how you will prevail through them so we're at the bottom right now as the boy lovers would say we're bottom feeders but I think we can still rise to the top. Um, We are definitely capable or more than capable of dominating the rest of this season. So I want to see how we rise from these challenges. I want to see what we're going to do as far as the different games that we play, the different teams that we play, and week by week. All right, I'm Mika, and that's football 101. Hey, okay, so thanks, Mika, because you always uh, bring it with your football 101. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now, I, I want to bring up a point, you know, uh, that was brought to my attention, and that is our defensive backs again. Mm-hmm. I think they look exceptional because... Everybody gave us the blues. They said the Atlanta Falcons was going to just make us look like we was a high school team. They mm-hmm. talked about Julio Jones, who is a beast when he's healthy. Okay, mm-hmm. and they talked about uh, uh, Hankerson. Hankerson looked like the same Hankerson that played with the Redskins. Mm-hmm. You play a few plays, you catch a few balls, and then every day you get skied or whatever, and then you hurt. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, exactly. Okay, <laughs> so but. Our defensive backs have really stepped up their game, but it's all a tribute to that defensive line. Mm. You got Pop Rose, you got Big Baby Baker, you got Ghost, mm-hmm. and then of course Kerrigan and Murphy. But the thing about it is, you know, um, 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 and, I, and, I, and, I, and I fail to say Hatcher, yeah. but Hatcher, man, I'm saying, man, you know. I'm, man, I'm, man, and, I, and, I, and I know you're about six, seven, six, eight, six, nine. I don't want to see you on the street. I'll tell you right now, because I, you know, you know, I, I'm, 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 much old, I'm much older than you. I ain't got no time to be trying to fight no big old giant, nothing like that. I'm telling you right now, I kind of see why the boy lovers got, got rid of you, man. You ain't showing me nothing, man. Mm. You was hurt for one or two seasons. <laughs> now you're supposed to be healthy this season, and you're the biggest dude on the field. I don't care. Offensive and defense on the field. You the biggest dude on the field and always getting pushed over here by the quarry somewhere. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what would be going on with Hatcher, man. You know. And then every now and then he'll get in the backfield and run right past the quarterback. He did that twice <laughs> in the Jets game. I'm like, man, who you who you grabbing at? Hmm. You, you need some glasses? You, you, you grabbing at his shadow? Cause you missed the dude clean, you know. So but but now so so uh tell me um how y'all feel basically about um, um, you know, you you brought it up already about uh, uh, Bashar Breeland, but you know, Bashar Breeland, man, you know, 
people talking about, you know, remember you talking about getting rid of David Anderson. I, I'm, I see why now. I mean, I mean, I think they felt like they had enough to cover what they needed, you, you know, as far as the defensive backs go, right? Well, no. They just lucked up and was able to sign Will Blackman. Uh -huh. But when they cut him, they did not have him signed. Yeah. You didn't know you was going to be able to find him. Okay. Yeah. But, Will, cause, but, but I tell you what, though, Will Blackman has been a great uh, 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 pickup. Uh, yeah, pick he is. He has. He has. Acquisition, right? He has been. Mm -hmm. But yeah. my point is this when uh -huh. you cut David Anderson, you didn't know you could get him at yeah. the time. Yeah. That's what happened. It didn't happen then. But what is David? Man, David Anderson got pushed to the ground the other day, didn't he? I, I, I saw David Anderson out there. No, he played for Oakland. Yes. Look, mm. Listen to me, listen to me, man. Him and 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 same thing happened to a Rambo. Rambo yeah. Came to came running Rambo, but he had Buffalo, right? Yeah. Right. But listen to me, I'm telling you, and, 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 and he got Buffalo. He got Buffalo. That's exactly what I was say. You know. Now, 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 let me say this. Now, I can't override the fact that I am just straight up humiliated watching Cousins play, man. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> okay, so. So he threw two interceptions this week, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so, so far, yeah, they they told it up now. I'm telling you right now, now he didn't play five games and has a total of how many interceptions? Two. I remember mean, some sorry. <laughs> I thought you made a game. I would agree. He averaged two a game. I think he bought eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got eight interceptions. Okay, now, now, uh, yeah, Rick, but you know what I noticed? I noticed this. Mm -hmm. He was he was reverting you back. On it? Huh? Oh, no, he was yeah. reverting back to choke time yeah. because it was a lot of throws that was just wide open throws yeah. that it was underthrown. He yeah. just, I could tell the pressure was getting to yeah. him, trying yeah. to be too perfect, and yeah. now he just just. just now let me let me let me try to take up for him and say one thing. Let me mm -hmm. say one thing, and I'm not trying to be sidetracked. I'm gonna say one thing. Do you think he's getting like that? He's getting to that over the hump phase. Like man, I ain't never played this much. And so he getting tired because 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 you don't get that kind of pressure in practice for real. Mm -hmm. Then then he hasn't been a starting quarterback here. He's had a few games, but he's come in to relieve Griffin, and he had a few starts. So do you think he's actually really not uh, um, able to handle a whole game? Because no, no. This is what I think. Well, then he's a bum. Go ahead. The, the, what I think is the pressure. That's on him now mm -hmm. is that by kind of closed door pressure where he know it ain't gonna go down with him stopping much longer. Right. Wow. Wow. Well, you see, that's the stuff that they don't let out in us because they don't wanna have to ask a thousand and one questions. Mm -hmm. But now it's like oh, I got to really make it happen because he knows what to be going around the red yeah, sure, and sure. they not letting it out. Yeah. Right? Sure. And I think his leash is getting short. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So so and, and and how do you feel about Gruden then? Because I'm gonna tell you this. You know, now Gruden, I'm saying right now is that now, this is what I do now, feel about Gruden. Okay, okay, okay. Now, now, now. So, so Gruden is his last name, right? That's yes. His name is Gruden. Last name is Gruden. Mm -hmm. and his last name is Cousin. You sure? Are you, you sure? You sure that 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 that's not his son? <laughs> Let me tell you right now. He talks and takes up for him like it's his blood son. <clears throat> I mean, every I I listen to Chris Paul today. And 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 I, I know Chris Paul and Jason Reed probably don't watch our show, but I'm telling you right now, Jason Reed gets on my last nerve. You mm -hmm. understand? I'm telling you, I, the only reason why I haven't been able to get through is because I know I'm going to end up fighting Jason Reed. <laughs> I'm, 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 serious, I'm serious. I mean, I mean, Jay Reed, he's a trip, and now he's starting to say that yeah, maybe Cousins is not what he thought. Man, he wasn't. He wasn't what you thought from the beginning anyway. But I don't know why you are RG3 hater. That's all he is. That's all you are. You are RG3 okay. hater. Okay, he keeps trying to back it up with all, all these facts. But the fact is, mm -hmm. you are RG3 hater. That's right. Period. All day long. You, you know say what whatever you want to say. Evidently, you try to interview him or something. He he shunned you or mm -hmm. or you wanted to ask him some questions. He was like, nah, mm -hmm. I'm like talking. I don't know what it is. But I will say this. Today, Chris Paul got on Jason Reed hard. And he made the calling audience Call in and ask Jay Reed, why are you such a RG3 hater and love Kirk Cousins? You should have heard him in there trying to explain himself. I was laughing, mm. especially yesterday. Mm. You hear me? Yesterday on the radio, oh my God. Wow. So, so now, but they put together this little thing. You know, you know how you, how you put, what would you call it? Like a, like a, like a little uh, medley or whatever, whatever mm. you want to call it. They, they, they compose all of these Gruden. Um, uh, um, um, interviews, excuses, and interviews. Yeah. You, you know, you know, protecting uh, his son. I mean, excuse me, Kirk Cousins. 
<laughs> and <laughs> and I mean every question about Kirk Cousins and the interceptions, Gruden had a reason and and, and that's right, he that that, that he is a clown. He had he had every so turn it around to so, 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 so the camera what, what, what that was. Had every excuse for him. And they said, you know, um, um, you know, he would, he would, that, that's him, that, 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 that's his head shot. Can you, can, can you get a picture of that? Is that coming through? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. All right. So, you know, he's a clown. <laughs> Ronald, Ronald McDonald. So, but you know, um, uh, and, 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 and they also brought up this question and we'll get back to that when we come back. And that is, is RG3 and Kirk Cousins. You ready for this? You ready for this? Mm -hmm. Is it a racial thing? We talked about that last week. We'll right. be right back. Alright, welcome back to uh, The Wild Show, The Watchers of the Watching Redskins. Now, interesting, interestingly, Jay Gruden, as you guys know, you know, gets interviewed and gets asked a lot of questions. Um, you know, Funny, he was asked that, uh, what do you think about the play calling? And he said, you know, I think, um, and I don't want to quote, but he definitely was talking about um, the play calling kind of sucked. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and to my knowledge, he was born in number one to be able to show them how to use RG3. Is that is, is that is that that right? Right. Okay. Teach him how to be okay. a quarterback. Teach him how to be a quarterback. Okay. Which which he was never an NFL quarterback. So I don't know. Anybody. Teach somebody something you don't know. But you're talking about anyway. But anyway. Okay. So he's supposed to be boarded to teach RG three how to be a quarterback. Then he's also supposed to be you know an offensive guru mind because he was down <clears throat> in Ohio supposedly uh, calling their plays and they and, and 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 running the show for them. And I ain't I ain't I ain't, I ain't. actually they starting to say their offense is flourishing since he's left. Mm, exactly because because in a total of let me see five and six is twenty one am I not correct right right minus six is a whole lot of losses okay so out of twenty one games Gruden has won six games since he's been here in Washington right well, check this out oh you finished no. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah go ahead check I mean, I mean I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just setting up the segment go ahead so, check this out yes. Last week I was so thoroughly pissed with Gruden. Okay. Cause now I'm starting to see, like y'all said, we know he hasn't proven whether he's a good coach or not. Mm -hmm. Well, he's proven to me he's a stupid coach. Okay. We played the Atlanta Falcons, mm -hmm. whose secondary ranked 29th. Yes. But they was number five in stopping the run. Okay. This fool would not attack that secondary, and I was so irate. Right. Guess what happened? On Facebook, my man sent me an article okay. of what the Bleacher Report wrote about Gruden before we hired him. Okay. I want you to hear this. Okay. The Washington Redskins will be making a mistake if they hire Jay Gruden as their next head coach. The Cincinnati Bengals offensive coordinator is emerging as a favorite to succeed Mike Shanahan, but Shanahan's reputation has been inflated. Mm -hmm. Okay. The familiarity is, excuse me, I skipped the skip program. Jason Lockerfall of CBS predicts that Gruden has the inside track to be the next Redskin boss. Mm -hmm. Lockerfall cites Gruden's relationship with Bruce Allen, who worked with Jay's older brother, Tampa, Bird, mm -hmm. but Tampa Bay. The familiarity is seen as deciding factor. So is the Gruden's work with Bengals Andy Dalton. Hold on, I'm going to get down with what you're really saying. Okay. But check this out. Part of the blame for Dalton's postseason meltdowns has to belong to his play caller. Wow. If Rudin is going to take credit for Dalton's number in the regular season, he has to bear the criticism for Dalton's follies in the playoffs. That was never more evident than in Dalton's most recent failure, the 27-10 home loss to the Chargers in the AFC wildcard round. Put simply, Rudin was thoroughly outcoached by San Diego defensive coordinator John Pagano. All it took were a few fire zone blitzes to completely wreck the Cincinnati offense. Forget any numbers that might suggest to the contrary, your own eyes will tell you Dalton has major issues against the blitz. Pajano knew it and used a host of pressures to force mistakes, something confidently predicted by this writer. The disturbing thing was how Gruden failed to adjust 
mm. to what the Chargers was doing. He failed to do what? He failed to adjust. And on that point right there, we know that our team, every game in the second half, don't we make that. no adjustments. Okay. We come in the third. What did I, what, what did I, what did I post Sunday? I said, uh-oh, here comes the third quarter. And you know Riggins ain't going to do nothing in the third quarter. You nothing. understand me? Nothing. I mean... I mean, I, I had to say it, but even the defense, y'all don't do nothing. In the third, y'all, I don't know what y'all, y'all come out, everybody come out, I don't know if y'all come out thinking, I don't know, do Rube tell y'all that the game is over, or, or we got the game in the bag now because we up, because I'm going to tell you right now, every team comes out with a different adjustment, and it shows because we could be up at half. Every but the time. obvious adjustment in the Atlanta game is don't run the ball to death this week. Yeah. They can't cover the pass. Right. Now this would really piss me off. As soon as they did throw the throw, throw the ball deep. Now, ball. now let me tell you, let me tell you piss me off. Wait, 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 Rashad oh. Ross. Uh-huh. They got a pass interference call that set up a touchdown. Right. Because they can't cover the pass. Now check this out. This would really piss me off. Okay. The New Orleans Saints at the time was two and four. Okay. They got the worst defense in the NFL. Yeah. So they are a worse team than the Redskins. That's right. Because our defense and offense were right high before this last game. Right. They kicked their butts, and you know what they did? They threw 37 passes That's to right. 24 one. That's right. And you know all Sean Payton did? Threw the ball on, no. threw the ball on, That's threw the ball on. Right. The ball on. Because they got a worse team, but they got a they don't got a dumb coach. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Ain't that something? Wow. You gotta make a game plan and adjust to who you playing. Just because we ran on the Rams and the Dolphins, that don't mean that the Atlanta Falcons is the Dolphins. They number five against the run, but they can't even shut the pass down. You still run at a brick wall. Okay. Now I, I, I want to say something that's on, that's getting on my nerves, and I think I think you spoke about it earlier. We were talking earlier off camera. And I want to put it on camera. That is, um, my understanding was that uh, Robert Griffin is making about you know a little more than three three million dollars mm-hmm. this this year. And I was trying to explain um, to my wife, in fact, that um, that one of the reasons why he may not play is because if he plays and gets hurt, he would then acquire that sixteen million. But you was explaining to me how it actually un- unfolds. I also was putting in that equation that. I think the reason why they're playing Alfred Morris, mm-hmm. the way they're playing Alfred Morris, is because they feel like if he really is a bull for real, he'll have leverage to ask for a nice, healthy contract next year. But but as you were showing me, statistically, he had been running pretty good, and that brings up a point that I, I mean I wasn't setting you up but I was also mm-hmm. wanting you to give me some facts because mm-hmm. I still feel like mm-hmm. because he was running like that they felt like you know what uh, we got to do something about this now do something about it that meaning keep, keeping Cousins in and that putting Griffin in mm-hmm. although I think Griffin helps the run game go better but I will say this you know he's just not on the field enough to make to, to, to have that Yardage percentage go higher than, than what it is. Now, last week, you know, as we know, against the Jets, um, he only had a, a 1.9 uh, per carry average. Gosh, per carry average. You know, mm. and um, yeah, and that, that, that's very low for, for, for Alfred. And also, I heard um, Cooley say that he like he was kind of, you know, uh, you know, halfing it out there a little bit, you know, kind of lawfully, you know, the lollygate a little bit, you know. I agree and, disagree with Cooley on that. Exactly. You, you know, you know, I, I mean, I mean, Coo- Coo- Cooley, I like some things Cooley say, some things I think Cooley drinking, you know what I mean? But anyway, um, but nevertheless, um, we're going to pause one more time and then we're going to come back and let you know that we want you guys to keep on liking and sharing our page. And we got some exciting news for you also about Sherwin Woods app. <coughs> Okay, we're back, and um, you know, I heard something funny on the internet, and um, some of you guys probably gonna enjoy this. Play it one more time. This is Chris Rock. Chris Rock even knows. <laughs> what he was saying was he was he was actually at a um, at a you know, award show for Eddie Murphy. In DC, in, in, yeah. in Washington DC, here, yeah. Kennedy Center, Kennedy Center. Mm-hmm. and he was hosting the show 
or, or he was actually it gets this his turn on stage. He was saying that he doesn't want to mess up because he know he might, might be replaced by Kirk Cousins. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's for sure. Um, but anyway, uh, let me let me say this, guys. Um, I don't know. I told you in the beginning of the season. I don't know how many games Kirk Cousins can really win in the NFL. I don't think he can win more than five games. That's what I say. Okay, mm -hmm. now I would I would want to see him because as a Redskins fan, I want I want my team to win more than five games. But I don't believe Kirk Cousins can beat more than five NFL teams. That's what I that's what I don't believe. Um, so with that being said, Sunday we play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. and everybody always says if you want to set a record on an NFL team, play the Redskins. Okay. So, uh, Scott, interestingly, I think we agree. I think um, it's going to be a long night or a long, long day, I should say, uh, for the rookie. You know, um, because I think Bashar Breedlin will eat him up. Now, we're going to see. He can't, he can't, he can't, he can't get out there and halfway throw that ball out there on them. That's for sure, because mm -hmm. they showed you already with an experienced quarterback that they can pick it off. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So on Sunday, what do you think the um, uh, the keys of winning will be against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I believe that the the, the defensive woes we saw against the Jets, we're not going to see that Sunday. Right? They're going to tackle clean. They're right. going to be more. Uh, have more great attention to detail. Okay. So, because the defense were never going to give you no performance like they did Sunday. Right. Uh, that's it, pretty mm -hmm. much, the defense. Mm -hmm. I, I think we'll find a way offensively. Okay. Do, we can do enough to get in. Okay. Hmm. okay. Darren, what you think? Um, uh, definitely the defense is, has, has to play every single game. Right. Um, right. It, just like they played this past Sunday, right. you know, I, I believe the reason why we didn't beat the Jets is because we couldn't score. Right. You know, we had one offensive touchdown, which came as a result of uh, the defense putting us in a position, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, to score early in the game. Right. You know? That's so right. that's right. Um, the offense, man, run the ball, man. I mean, I I I I, I, I haven't checked the stats on Tampa Bay, so I don't know, you know how they are against the run mm -hmm. or, or pass or whatever, mm -hmm. but I know I haven't seen enough running. Right. You know. It's like Alfred Morris is, is, you know, just been abandoned, which I think is kind of, you know, cruddy because I know he's in the contract year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I know what that's all about. But man, if they if, you know, just run the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, I mean it's just it's just basic football. Yeah. Run, establish the run, pass because you know you've established that, you know, you can run. So right. you know you got I mean, it's just simple football to me. It, it, look, it looks like they're like like Gruden is is just not playing basic football. Right. No adjustments, you know, after the half. So we'll see, man. I mean, we one game out of first place, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I, I like to see us, you know, you know, go ahead and get a win, man. You know, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. Okay. So with that being said, I say this. Okay, now. Playing Tampa Bay Buccaneers, our defense definitely has to show up because without the defense, our offense ain't doing nothing. Okay, and I say that to say this: even if Jackson come back, if you can't get the ball to some of these other receivers who ain't as fast as Jackson is supposed to be, mm -hmm. then how you get the ball to Jackson? Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, you know, if you, if you're throwing the ball short and behind people. He's faster. He's supposed to be the fastest receiver we got. So when he go out there, he start running, you're going to be throwing the ball way behind him. Mm -hmm. So that, so that means we're going to have more interceptions? I don't know. You know, um, but for so but what I'm going to be, I'm going to be hard for this point out on Kirk Cousins and the stupid offensive coordinator. I'm, I'm sorry. And our coach, not our offensive coordinator, but the offensive coordinator, I don't, I don't know who's, who's approving your plays, but I will say this. Until I see Kirk Cousins Win a game, and I'm talking about win a game. I ain't talking about the defense do it. I'm talking about I want to see Kirk Cousins throw up 35 points and no interceptions. Okay, well, he won the Eagles game. Huh? He won the Eagles game. Uh, no, 
good salt won the Eagles game. You're right. Okay. <laughs> so I, mean, I, mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, and that, and that the goal against me saying, but I'm saying, yeah, you're right, if he had been catching it, because he would catch them tough passes. I, mean, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Hey, I know what you're saying. Double, double and triple. Pass. I know what you're saying. Yeah. But, but Gasol, he, he showed you that he's a man. Right. 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 Now, so what I'm hoping is, I'm hoping, and I'm hoping that that um, that Kirk Cousins really can come out of this funk because I, if they, if they see, see, quite as a kept. If they let him keep playing, which I don't care, if they let him keep playing, maybe he'll come out of it and see, he'll say, okay, I've had my ups and my downs, and now I know what it is to be a full season NFL quarterback. But if they're going to let him play the next three games, and he ain't going to play for eight games, and they're going to they gonna mess around and put Coy in or whatever, they're going to fight around with Colt, whatever the case may be, and then maybe let Robert play the last game of the season or something like that, something stupid like that, you know. If you're gonna do that, you know, you know, we 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 gonna have a very frustrating season. It's already frustrating already. But what I what I what I like to see, I like to see the defense come out and um, shake up uh, Jameson and um, and um, and because because you know because Winston can mess around and he he'll he'll mess around and get on a, get on a little roll and throw that ball on you because he didn't got his little mind together now that he can play in the NFL. You, you know you know he thought he gonna come out that first game. He thought it gonna be just, just like college. He found out, hey man, welcome to the NFL. So I hope the defense lets him know, buddy, you're playing against a different caliber of team. Because, you know, Tampa Bay schedule ain't, ain't like no Washington Redskins schedule, man. I'm, 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 no, you know, oh, you know, I was easy this year. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, fairly easy, but I'm, but I'm still saying, Jameis Jam, Jam, Winston will find out what it is to play in the NFL once, once, once them boys get to banging on him. And uh, and the receivers get to shutting down his I mean his his uh, his uh, 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 our our cornerbacks and safeties get to shutting down the receivers. Now, hopefully we can score about I don't know because we ain't been doing it lately. But I keep saying this magical twenty one to twenty or twenty seven points. But I'm I'm thinking twenty seven, maybe fourteen, or excuse me twenty one. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm I'm I'm, I'm speaking about myself. Twenty one fourteen Redskins. Mm. And I'm thinking that. Um, again, uh, for the second week in a row, Breeden will be, Rashad Breeden will be the, the X Factor. What you think? Um, they should be able to score on Tampa Bay. Okay. Everybody else is. <laughs> you know, so, um, I mean, it, and, it, and it should be, I, I'm, I'm going to say around what you're talking about. I'm, I'm looking like 23, mm -hmm. you know, because um, we got a great field goal kicker, yeah. you know, a great. Great. Right. Uh, um, he's been doing his job, you know. Um, and the defense has been playing. Tampa Bay hasn't looked all that great. Um, so I'd like to see us win 24, I'm going to say 24 20. Mm -hmm. But the Redskins have found a way to lose, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you said when we were texting on Sunday, man. The third quarter, we don't do a we don't do we don't do nothing. Right, right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, That's right. then fourth quarter he we we, we, we come back he yeah. lives like a fire. Yeah, dream. yeah, I mean it's like you know it's, there's a sister urgency in the fourth quarter. Right. Oh, you know time's running out. We got to, man play like that in the first half. Right. That's right. Play like that in the second half. That's right, you know, Scott. Make no mistake about it. Mm -hmm. Jay Gruden ain't gonna coach no better. Okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna win just because we're a better team. Okay. We ain't, Scott, Scott McLuhan's product on the field going to be better on both sides of the ball. We're just going to be physically outplay them on both sides of the ball. That's how we're going to win. Got a score for them? Uh, yeah. 20 to 17. Okay. 20 to 17. Okay. Okay. With that being said, okay, remember, um, go get Cheryl Underwood's app. We are finally going to be on Cheryl Underwood's app. Um... It's a podcast, so you will be hearing us, not seeing us. So you please keep tuning in to the Wild Show, the Washington Washington Reds, because I know it's been hard to find us, but um, but we will be in rotation. And also, if you any one of us Facebook friends, you know me, Daryl or Scott, Mika, Tell Shorty, Charles Kane, we will also be advertising it on our Facebook pages. So look for the Washington Redskins show, uh, the Wild Show, the Washington of the Washington Redskins. I'm Mike Washington, and always remember that HTTR never means hater, mm -hmm. but it always means hell to the Redskins. Peace. See you next time.
My son works. <laughs>